and welcome to another episode of Full Bar. In today's video we are going to learn how to build a fully coded backend using AppSync with serverless framework. If you are interested in watching more content about serverless, cloud computing and software engineer practices in general, subscribe to my channel in the red button below. I post a video every Tuesday. So let's get started! <laughs> the third video in the series of AppSync. In the first video we learned the basics of GraphQL, in the second video we learn what is basics of AppSync. I leave you the playlist on the top so if you have not watched these videos you should go and watch them. And in this third episode we are going to build a fully coded backend and in the next video we are, we are going to use that backend to build a frontend. So this is kind of an exercise. So let's go to the code and get this started. So the first thing we are going to do is to create a new serverless project. So for that we create a new directory and we get into it. And after we create the serverless project, we will create a node project as well. So then we can put all our dependencies there. And after that we just open it with Atom. We go to the serverless YAML and we clean up a little bit there. So it's easier to work with a clean file. There's so many comments in this file. And we also will change the runtime from 6 to 8 because the template has not been modified yet. Cool, now it's clean. So the first thing we are going to do is to rename the function to GraphQL. We are coming back to handler.js later on the video, so for now let's leave it like that. The first thing we are going to do is to create the Cognito user pool client uh, for the user pool and then the identity uh, pool for providing authentication with the AppSync endpoint. So we are going to create an AppSync endpoint that will be authenticated with Cognito. In the previous video we used the API key but now I want to use Cognito user so then when we build the front end in the next video we will have a login for this user and we will be able to see the API in action. If we don't have authorization then we won't be able to see anything. So let's create that. I already created a video about this, so I will leave the video in the card and in the description box because now I will just put everything I need to put in here very fast without explaining it because I already did explain it. You can find the code in a GitHub repo for these uh, things that I'm doing, so you can go there and copy paste everything. After we create the Cognito user pool, the client, the identity pool, and all the policies, we just deploy. So for that I'm adding a profile. You might have the default one, so don't worry. And I will speed up the deployment and I come back when the deployment is done. I forgot to say that for doing this project you need to have serverless install and an AWS account. So I will leave you the instructions on how to install serverless if you have not done it and how to configure it. When you log in in here you need to be logged into your, to your AWS account and if you don't have an AWS account I also leave you a video about that in the card. So we are going to Cognito and we are going to verify that everything was created. We have the client, we have the user, we have the identity pool. So everything seems fine. Cool. So now let's add the plugin we are going to use. We are going to use the serverless AppSync plugin. That is a plugin that will help us to create the AppSync backend pretty easy from serverless YAML without going to create everything as a cloud formation. So we need to add that plugin in the top of the file and also we need to install the dependency to the node project. So that's what I'm doing. You can find the information about this plugin in the GitHub repo. I leave you the link in the description box and there you can find all the information on how to use it and everything else. From this plugin I'm going to use the configuration as it's uh, in, the, in the readme file and we are going to use Cognito user pool so that's what we are going to configure and our app sync will only have a mapping towards Lambda. We are not going to use Dynamo or Elastic Cache. So it's going to be very simple configuration. Our app sync basically is going to be hello world example that we'll call a Lambda and we'll return the response. So this is not to show how to create a GraphQL but it's more on how to configure the serverless framework with this plugin and your uh, an app sync. 
you want to have more examples about this, let me know in the comment box below and I can create better examples for you in the future. So here you can find an example on how to configure it. It's quite a long configuration that you need to add to the custom, but let's go step by step. So the first thing that you require is your account ID. And for that, I'm going to use the serverless Soda parameters plugin. So we need to install that one too and put it in the plugins property in the top of the file. And that will let us uh, have reference to our account ID with a hashtag. So we don't need to look for our account ID and this code can be reutilizable in different accounts. So we install that, the node dependency, and then it's ready to be used. Next, we are going to configure the app sync itself. We'll put in a name to it. I will call it SLS AppSync API. Then we are going to pick an authentication type. You have APIs, you have OpenID, you have Cognito user pools, and we are going to pick Cognito user pools. Then you need to configure your Cognito user pools. So the region, if uh, the default action that is allow, and the user pool ID. I get that user pool ID from the, from the Cognito page so it's pretty straightforward if we go there you can see that it's there in the github project you will see that i'm just calling it as a reference from the one that we build in the resources so you don't need um, even to look for it the next thing we are going to do is to create the mapping templates and this is the mapping of the request and response so we are going to define for each uh, queries mutation uh, where it should look for and in this case, we are going to look for a Lambda when there is a query that says hello world and the request needs to map in like this txt file and the response needs to map like will be mapped with this txt file. I will build this in a little while. For now, we just continue building the custom property. The next thing we are going to do is to define the GraphQL schema. By default, it's a schema GraphQL, but if you have other names, just need to specify it there and we are going to add the schema in a moment. Then you need to define this service role. I put this name, AppSync service role. And then we are going to define the data sources. So as I said, we are going to have one Lambda and this Lambda, it's if you see the name of this data source match with the data source that we have in the mapping template. So it's the same. It, there you can find the config of the Lambda that is the GraphQL Lambda function. That is the lambda we define in the top. At the beginning, there was the default lambda. And the role is AppSync Lambda service role. So we are going to create that in a moment. So now we are going to create that role, the AppSync Lambda service role. So basically, this is a role that would allow the um, AppSync to call this lambda. So basically, we are defining just a role and a policy that allows uh, AppSync to invoke this Lambda. So just add that. And now we can go and create the mappings. So we are going to create a new folder called mapping templates, and we are going to create two files, one for the request and one for the response with the names that we have put in there. So let's create the two files. And you will have as many of these, these files as different mappings you need to have. So this can go pretty massive, pretty fast. The next file we are going to create is the GraphQL schema. So we create that one. And now we can put the schema. It's a very simple schema. As I said, it's a hello world query and it returns just a string. So it's pretty, pretty straightforward with some parameters that we are not even going to use in this example. So now we can go to the request mappings and we are going to print the request. So basically this is the mapping that AppSync will do to the Lambda. So the field is hello world. Then the arguments are the whatever is in the arguments. And in the handler, we are going to pass the username. And then the response is basically we are matching the result to the response. So now we go to our handler and you can see that we are um, grabbing these, these uh, arguments that we pass. So we have the consumer key and the consumer secret, they are the event arguments that we are passing in the in the schema. We are not going to use this, but if we were using them, this is the way that we map them. And then we have the event.field, that is the name of the query, that is hello world, and then we return with hello world. So it's pretty, pretty straightforward. 
we can create a new user so we can test this after we deploy we just put a username and password and we just create that manually in our user pool and then we deploy and I will speed up this so we can see what happens so after it's deployed we will go and see in the app sync service that we have the app sync that we created and then if we go to queries we can log in with that user that we just created and we can test this out so if we go to the schema we can see that we have our hello world that was updated there and if we see in the resolver it's attached to a lambda so now we can run that in the query and we can see that is returning hello world so this works and if we go to data sources we can see there is the lambda that we created with the name we created it and in the schema as i said the resolver is the one we are interested in and in the settings we can see that the user pool is configured correctly so everything is as we put it in the serverless yaml this was the video for today i hope you like it if you did give a big thumbs up and if you know somebody that might be interested in this topic, share it with them. If you have any comment questions or things you would like to see about AppSync or whatever, just leave them in the comment box below. I like making videos that you are interested in watching. Around here, there are other videos from my channel for you to watch. So go ahead and click. And if not, I see you in the next episode of Wubar. Ciao, ciao.